Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is from Andrew Jacked, and it's not much, it's not really a physique update, he's showing us his legs a little bit, but if we take a closer look at this photo, we can see some other interesting things as well. So yesterday, I made my prediction video for the 2024 Mr. Olympia, and when I put Andrew Jack, that was the, 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 the placing that I was not so sure about, that I felt bad about. I put Andrew Jack in fifth. Simply because of all of the weaknesses, all the flaws that he has in the side and the back poses. But the wow factor, the freak factor that Andrew Jack has is, is, is it's crazy. It's insane. And, you know, I'm looking at his, at his posing routine and I'm like... Wow, this is this is extraordinary. Maybe once he steps on the stage and he's actually next to the other guys, maybe it's gonna be a different story. Maybe he will prove me wrong. I am sticking with my prediction. What's done is done. But, you know, I'm looking at this physique and I'm like... I don't know. I don't know, man. We'll see. Soon enough. Now, one of the flaws that uh, Andrew Jack has would be his legs. But only from the back, right? The lack of definition, the lack of striations and the separation, the hamstrings, uh, the same thing with his uh, glutes, the lack of thickness in the legs from the side, but from the front, his legs are actually insane. They're actually freaky. And I think he gained some serious tissue to them over the past uh, year, like in his offseason. I think his legs, his quads from the front, are incredible now, they're definitely matching Samson Dauda and, and, and even Haile Chopin, they're better than the Derek Lansford squads and for sure better than Nick Walker squads. Now, in this most recent physique update, uh, his legs don't look lean enough, they don't look separated, but legs guys, this is only because he just trained them. They're pumped, they're full of blood, that's what happens after a leg workout, as I'm sure all of you know. So on that stage, I'm pretty sure he's going to be in a really good shape. Also, Chris Cito basically said it after the Texas Pro last year, he went, to he went back to Nigeria and he wasn't really focused. This time around, he's actually very focused. And I'm pretty sure Andrew Jack is going to be in crazy condition this year. Maybe not as conditioned as, let's say, Nick Walker or, like, uh, Derek Lansford from the back or Hardy if he brings his absolute best, but conditioned enough for him, for Andrew Jack. The other thing is uh, the, the way this uh, shirt uh, fits him, right? Like, if he was wearing this uh, a bit oversized t-shirt and, and everything was just uh, stretched and he was looking full and huge... I would be worried for his conditioning, but since it's looking kind of baggy for a guy that is this big, it means he's kind of flat, which is definitely an amazing thing. He needs to go flat if he wants to be conditioned. And the last thing that I noticed is like the size of his forearms. That's also kind of a weakness for Andrew Jack, but I mean, who is even looking at forearms? Nobody. But they're kind of adding to the overall illusion of size, of thickness, especially in some poses. So you can see it here very clearly, like his forearms are definitely not matching like the size of his legs or his calves or anything really in his body. He definitely has uh, much, much smaller forearms than anything in his physique. His uh, face, though, it doesn't look sucked in. It doesn't really look like a death face, right? But I think for Andrew Jack, this is actually what his face looks like once he's lean. So... I don't think we should look at his face too much because he's never really, he never really has that uh, sucked in look in his face for some reason. He has this kind of a face basically always, but when he's bulking, it's actually much worse. So face wise, I think he's actually bringing the conditioning. And yeah, overall, I'm expecting Andrew Jack to truly bring it this year. Worst case scenario, top five, but maybe even higher than that. I definitely don't have him lower than fifth. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is very interesting. It's Samson Dauda's story in which he's basically showing us that his breakfast is three eggs and a black coffee. That's it. That's all. For a guy who is like 300 pounds, this is basically nothing. It would be like if you and I didn't eat at all. Pretty much. I mean, it's gonna help him go through through the day and not collapse, but 
it's really low food and I'm happy to see this I'm really happy to see this because it means that Samson is pushing for conditioning he is obviously not happy with what he brought to the France Pro stage he is not satisfied he realized that he needs to get much more condition for the Mr. Olympia and that's the only way he can uh, win it you know the likelihood of somebody winning the Mr. Olympia without being shredded is very small the chances are slim to none he needs to be conditioned definitely more conditioned than here if he wants to win the damn thing now in these uh, backstage uh, videos and photos he actually looked much more conditioned than on stage so maybe he is not that much behind with conditioning but he's still not where he needs to be where Derek Lansford is going to be from the back or where Nick Walker is going to be so he needs to be in much better condition and he's working on it he also posted a story of doing cardio now I don't know how much cardio he's doing I hope he's not eating that little because he doesn't want to do the cardio I hope he's actually doing a lot of cardio as well and that he is not actually eating a lot more food after that breakfast but if he is pushing for conditioning that's a really good sign I don't know how much can be done in like 10 days and realistically with carving up for the show and like uh, with uh, depleting after the France Pro it's less than 10 days maybe he has like a week really to, to work on conditioning and again I hope he has a couple of aces up his sleeve like he didn't use all the fat burners he didn't push this hard with food and cardio for the France before the France and he can actually uh, use those tools and really push for conditioning for the Mr. Olympia if he does that and if he gets 10% more conditioned guys anything is possible all right next up we also got a physique update uh, well not a physique update but a training video of Hardy Japan but he's wearing a tank top so we can kind of see what his skin is looking like how lean he is in the areas that he's showing and uh, how big he is right now at this point now this is at 10 days out uh, he actually said it so for those of you who will say that he's playing games posting old videos no he said it it's 10 days out and this is in uh, honey rambut's gym so it's it's right now let's take a look at the video now as you guys know i put hardy in that controversial fourth spot at the mr olympia my prediction the reason why i did that is because i have a feeling based on what i saw so far that he is not going to be at his 100 percent now Nick Walker is in the mix and I think he's bringing something absolutely insane Samson already like beat Hardy at the Arnold Classic UK based on a couple of judges a couple of judges actually saw Samson winning that show so I think those two guys may have closed the gap but you never know Hardy Chopin can also bring his absolute best if he brings what he brought to the Arnold Classic stage that's probably not happening maybe but probably not now based on this video it's really hard to conclude what his conditioning is like but like at 10 days out I would love to see him like dry peeled and I saw that before the Arnold Classic this time around you know he looks big he looks full but like I don't see some crazy crispness or like super thin skin anything like that you know so I don't know what he's gonna bring maybe he's going to be at 90% what happens with Hari Chopin this year if he is 90% like does he still win against Nick Walker and Samson Daura or does he lose can Andrew Jack even defeat him I mean I don't know I don't know but like last year he was off at a Mr. Olympia he wasn't super conditioned and maybe he's playing the size game maybe he wants to be as big as possible but the other guys are also very big already and if they get in condition and Hari doesn't get in that crazy crispiness I don't know I don't know if he can actually beat them but again this is just a training video it's not a posing video the lighting is the way it is so if I saw a more clear physique update of Hari I would make a better assessment but based on what I'm seeing so far yeah I'm definitely sticking with my fourth place prediction all right next up we got a little uh, physique update from Hunter Labrada which you guys probably saw already I actually posted it in my prediction video yesterday so in this video i mean i gotta say hunter actually looks crazy big super massive in very good condition as well and i'm pretty sure he's going to be like big a lot bigger than like martin fitzwater muscularity and conditioning wise he's probably going to be more complete than andrew jack for example 
You know, he's going to have a peeled back and like peeled glutes and hamstrings and like big legs from behind and from the side as well. But the reason why I don't have Hunter placing super high, I actually had him in 8th, is because of his midsection. You know, I don't know if he's going to be able to control it, to make it actually look aesthetic. It's messed up. Look at it right here. Like, it went, it went sideways. What he should do in that uh, absent ties is what Derek Lansford did last year. You know, pull a deep vacuum, flex the abs for a moment and just go to the vacuum and just hold on to that vacuum the entire time he's on stage. Look at his front double, for example, with a vacuum. It looks 10 times better. And that's the only thing that's going to prevent him from placing, like, inside of the top six. You know, the only thing that can, like, put him in 10th spot, in my opinion. I'm not a judge, but if I judge the show, I would definitely penalize him for that midsection. And I have a feeling that the, the other judges are going to do that as well. Because, especially the Mr. Olympia, that's a, that's a big thing. That's a factor that nobody's going to ignore. So, he's obviously showing us here that he can do a vacuum. He can pull it. It's all about practicing it, working like a maniac on that stamina and just practicing posing basically like three hours a day. That's what I would advise him to do if I was his coach. Forget about conditioning and fullness. Even if he is the way he looked in 2021 and his midsection looks better, he would probably still place better than with all this muscle and all this conditioning if his midsection is uh, not good and it's bad. It's actually very, very bad. The only way he can reverse this is by... Doing the vacuum, practicing the vacuum, three hours a day, every single day, that's all he needs to do. We'll see if he's going to be able to do that, I think he's not going to do it, I think he's too lazy to do that, but if he did it with this much muscle and this conditioning and like with his completeness and everything, I think he would place in that top six for sure. But since I don't think he's going to do it, I have him in eight, and, and that's probably being generous. Alright, at 6 weeks out of Romania Pro, we got a physique update from Horse MD, who is looking very, very good right now, actually, at 6 weeks out. It seems like this year, he is bringing it, he is not gonna fail like he did the Arnold Classic, you know, he seems to be bringing good conditioning this time around. And I'm looking at his physique and I'm thinking like, I'm gonna use the word that I really hate when people use about bodybuilders, I'm gonna say he looks beautiful right this physique looks like a piece of art honestly i definitely wouldn't go as far as to use the word gorgeous that's the word you should never use when you're describing bodybuilding physiques but beautiful you can you can go that far i think and uh, he's also got a lot of muscle you know he actually looks freaking huge right here those legs are massive and actually you know he's uh, he's leg dominant but actually right here his upper body is definitely matching even though this photo was taken like from a lower angle which would make his legs appear bigger his upper body is actually definitely matching his lower body, like, the size of the arms and, like, the, the lats, the way they're popping, like, he doesn't have a great back, great lats, but here, like, with his uh, shoulder-to-waist ratio and, like, with his size and with his shape and beautiful uh, skeletal structure, I can definitely see this guy win Romania Pro and qualify for the Mr. Olympia next year. It depends who jumps in, maybe Bekhru Stabani is gonna do it, maybe somebody like Samson or the other big-name guys jump in. But if they don't, Horse MD can win Romania Pro for sure. And I'm gonna leave you off, guys, with uh, this, <laughs> this post that who is the best bodybuilder Instagram page made. And I don't even know what to say. <laughs> this, I love this page. This page is hilarious, honestly. Um, I, I feel like they, they ruined Keon Pearson, for me, at least. I mean, he better hope he actually has a, has a tear in the Tractus Femoris, as I said in the comment there. Uh, I don't know, man, I don't know what to say, like, I never saw anything like this ever before, this is, this is just, I don't know, this, this, this is crazy. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave you off with this, you tell me down below whatever you think, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up for more content like this about bodybuilding, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.